So let's look at the difference between accessibility and inclusion. An accessible play space may not be inclusive, but an inclusive play space should be accessible, both to children and their carers. The same technical report, Playground Equipment Accessible for All Children, covers both issues, accessibility and inclusion. Concerning accessibility, it addresses a few questions, like um, how to reach the play space, proximity and means of access, which autonomy for teenagers? Does it have supporting facilities, like car parking, toilets, with changing facilities for older and heavier children? Is it easy to circulate around the place? These are important issues, as this may encourage carers to bring children with special needs to this play space more often. And what about seating facilities, picnic tables, shelter from the sun, so that adults also feel comfortable? This will contribute for children to stay and play longer. Accessible play spaces should take into account children, but also their carers. Inclusion does not mean that every piece of play equipment should be accessible to all children, but rather to provide spaces where there are safe and challenging opportunities for children of different abilities and needs to play together and where all generations feel welcome. If all activities were to be easily accessible to all children, there would be a risk of uh, having more vulnerable children exposed to unacceptable risk of injury or removing opportunities for challenge and risky play to many users like older or more experienced and agile children. For instance, if there were access ramps to all equipment or no heights. The level of risk offered by activities or play equipment needs to be easily perceived in order to allow for free choice and action either for the children or the carers of the most vulnerable ones. It may be necessary to restrict access to functions that younger or less able children might not be able to cope with. This is part of risk management. Inclusion is much more than removing architectural barriers. It is also about social barriers and building enabling environments, as there are no disabled people as such. Everyone has their own abilities. Enabling environments offer opportunities for playing together, for social participation, for cooperation in play, for creating a sense of belonging to a community in a safe and challenging way for all. So, how to build an inclusive play environment? All children, whatever their abilities, need a sense of risky play and challenge to overcome obstacles and surpass themselves. Enabling environments offer a diversity of types of play and levels of challenge like catering for different age groups, including teenagers, requiring as many senses as possible, and at least two, and considering the wider range of abilities possible, and not only sensorial stimulation, but also physical challenge. So, here are some examples that can contribute to an inclusive environment. Interactive play induces cooperation. Interaction or the presence of adults can be reassuring for some children. Water play, sand play, music, all these are enjoyable for all generations. For multisensorial stimulation, you can offer a diversity of materials, soft, hard, loose feel, stone, metal, wood. Think of tactile sensations also for bare feet, gravel, sand, bark water, grass, introduce vegetation and plants. Think of places to sit, to lie down, to be together. The play provision can involve less physical risk and stimulate social relations, introspection, role play and other sensations and skills. So what to consider when choosing equipment for it to be more inclusive? Provision of equipment should focus on a wide variety of abilities rather than one type of disability. Opportunities for gripping, climbing, swinging, sliding. Access to adults is required by playground equipment standards, so the whole family can play together and the child that is scared or more vulnerable can always have support. 
The choice of equipment should offer different play functions. It should offer opportunities for collective use, like large enough platforms to accommodate several users. And the same equipment can have different uses. For instance, in this case, with body support and assistance from a carer, gentle rocking, or on his own and more dynamic movements. Large swing seats allow for children with different ages and abilities to use them together with other children or adults, sitting or lying down with more or less gripping or body support. This promotes cooperation, empathy, respect for each other's limits or boundaries. Embankment slides can offer different types of access to cater for different levels of challenge. And slides with a longer run-out can also be safer for children with special needs or feeling more insecure. Children in wheelchairs may also like experiencing bumping, speed, moving alongside other children, and whenever possible, get out of the wheelchair, even if it is for crawling or sitting on a sandpit, for instance. Let's look at what is not inclusion. It is very important to avoid specific spots for disabled. This further promotes segregation or exclusion. Here, with a water fountain, it is very important to avoid signage for disabled. This can create further isolation and stigma. Inclusive design is not visible. It's intuitive in use. Swings for wheelchair users are not inclusive equipment. They can even be dangerous for children without wheelchair, so there is no playing together. It should not be free access, it should be locked and only to be used with professional supervision. In this case, it is even heavy and dangerous for all. It needs a new design and construction. Remember, swings specific for wheelchair users are, cannot be seen as inclusive, as they do not allow for playing together and they should be locked when not supervised.